Uh, this is another reason we need to get vaccinated. The uh, virus has disproportionately impacted our community. CDC reports 11.5% of COVID cases are among black, non-Hispanic people, and that represents a little more than 18 million cases, which is only 63%. Now, tragically, in a recent interview with Vlad TV, actor Michael Jai White, who uh, appeared in Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married, just shared that his oldest son uh, died a few months ago after contracting COVID-19 at the age of 38. So many stories like this one. We need to talk about them. Uh, we also need to talk about some of the myths that are out there as well that is keeping people from getting vaccinated. Of course, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with Michael Jai White. Good friend of mine as well. Uh, Dr. Ebony Jade Hilton, a physician at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, joins us to discuss what she's seeing and to talk fact versus fiction when it comes to the vaccine. Welcome once again, Dr. Ebony. And I wanted to have you on because, once again, I, you, you, you've been on the show before. You are super passionate about this. I read your tweets and you go in. You are beyond fed up, like a lot of people out there. How frustrating is it being on the front lines especially with all the misinformation and confusion about mass mandates and what the vaccine can and cannot do. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm more frustrated now than before, just because before I could at least say that people were making a decision who had control of their lives. But unfortunately now we're seeing more and more children being impacted by COVID-19. And so that's where my ability to control um, emotions kind of go out the window. Because in, in early June, for instance, one out of every three teens um, that were admitted to the hospital literally went to the ICU, 5% required ventilation. And at, what we're seeing now is that the Delta variant is just literally outpacing um, the ICUs that we have available for kids. And that's mm. in Louisiana, Alabama, Arkansas, Texas, Florida, where they literally don't have beds anymore. And so what do you do yeah. when we're now talking about opening up schools and exposing even more children to this virus. So, yeah. Yeah, and you see what uh, Governor DeSantis is doing down there when he's not implementing mass mandates and what he's trying to do. But you know what, Dr. Uh, Ebony, uh, I, I, since I had it, I was like, okay, let me let me see the other side. Let me, let me talk to them because maybe we're talking at them instead of talking to them mm -hmm. to try and get them to understand. But there's so much misinformation that's out there and I see it on my Twitter feed. So I put something out there, I said, you know, look, we want to answer some of your questions. If you still have not gotten the vaccine, tell me why you haven't gotten the vaccine. Why are you so hesitant? And I got a lot of feedback. So I want to throw out a couple of uh, the, the questions that I've been asked on my Twitter account, and I want to present them to you. And I want you to dispel some of the myths out there. Like this one from uh, Barker, she tweeted, uh, not approved, not reporting all the ingredients, no way of knowing the long-term effects. W what do you say to someone like that? Right. It's, it's one of those things when, when people say not approved, for one, we do have the EUA, which is emergency use, right? This is not like mm -hmm. a, a stamp of just they just threw something out there. These vaccines have, for one, been in the works, mRNA vaccines in totality, have been in the works for decades. This is not a new mm -hmm. necessarily concept. It is a new vi uh, vaccine for this particular virus. But the idea of mRNA vaccines have been in use and have been used for cancer treatments, for instance, in the fact that it trains your body to recognize a protein. Um, the other thing is that these vaccines went through clinical trial in the same way that we do other clinical trials, right? We, we have to test for safety mm -hmm. and efficacy. The difference is, is that typically what happens is that you have to do the clinical trials and then you get money in order to produce these, these, um, these interventions. COVID, because so many people were dying, I have to remind Americans that we've lost now over 600,000 Americans in a year. Um, because of that fast pace, all the wealthiest nations of the world said, let's dump money mm. into this system, that if this thing proves itself to be safe and efficacious, then automatically, because we've dumped all this money into the system, the vaccines will be available on day one and not years later. And so people just have to, if you're not in the process of uh, understanding yeah. fully what usually happens, sometimes it's best to say nothing at all because you may be risking someone I, I, else's life by kind of perpetuating these these notions. 
I love that you said that because this is affecting the entire world. So the best scientists and doctors from around the world coming together to try and stamp out a pandemic that affects us all. So yes, it, it's going to be a, a little bit quicker than expected and people and the nations were losing money. So yeah, we want to get people back to work. Uh, another thing that's out there, uh, I've heard people talking about, Hey, I'm healthy. I'm young. I, I do things to boost my immune system naturally and asking why getting the vaccine if they take care of their bodies already through natural causes. I, I, what do you say to them? I tell them, uh, you know, for one, this whole notion of, oh, you guys don't celebrate people being healthy. Doctors have been telling people to be healthy <laughs> forever. This is nothing new. We say don't smoke. We say use healthy lifestyle, exercise. But COVID-19 does not care. We've literally buried children, the healthiest of, of persons that we have walking around who are nine, 10 years old, we buried them because of COVID-19. So imagine what you, if you've been living for 30, 40 years and your organs have been running on this treadmill trying to keep up with regular life, imagine what happens if COVID-19 touches those lungs or touches that kidney. Mm -hmm. it's, it is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when, if you are not vaccinated at this point because COVID, the Delta variant, is spreading like wildfire. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and we, that's why we got to keep the, uh, the vaccination rate up to keep up with the, uh, the different uh, variants that are coming out there. Like we got the Delta, Delta Plus, the land. We're going to talk to uh, Dr. Fauci about that in just a second. I was arguing with a, a family member. Somebody's going to be in a family. I don't know if he's going to be in a family. If he can, continues to talk like this, he was saying, well, why am I going to get this? This vaccination is actually killing people. I read somewhere where it killed 12,000 people. Uh, that people, and this is what people are saying that the, the government is covering up that many people are actually dying from the vaccine. What do you say to them? I tell those people all the time, show me where. I, I, literally, it, mm -hmm. it's one of these things that if you're reading something on Facebook that you found that your friend friend found, and it has absolutely no data, show me where. Come into the hospital. I, I will allow anyone who wants to walk through the hospital, we can go and go through all the credentialing, get your your HIPAA, your certification, so you can walk through the COVID ICU and see it for yourself. Um, but if you're going to be that bold to make those statements, then literally go and, and, and see what it's like to risk your life to take care of those persons who now literally cannot mm. breathe. It is not it is not a benign thing to make those comments because on the other end of it, you may be costing someone their life. Absolutely. Uh, once again, this is a preventative measure. It is not a cure. It, nothing is 100 uh, percent. And, you know, of course, when I had it, you know, people use it as an excuse of saying, hey, so you, you fully vaccinated. You can. Yeah, you can. You're fully a alive now too. You can be hospital. And I'm still fully <laughs> alive. And like ninety nine point yes. nine percent of the people who are vaccinated, just like me, they are out of the hospital and they're fully alive. It's still a possibility, a small, rare possibility. But once again, I'd rather take that chance than anything else. I got one more because I did hear about this uh, and it, it's from a, a lot of women out there. And it, is, it could be a concern because of uh, the, the vaccine and still maybe not knowing enough about this. They're concerned about being sterile or infertility. Uh, when you hear women talk about that part of, of uh, taking the vaccine and their concerns from it, uh, what goes through your head and how do you address that? Right, I, I find that to be really um, disturbing to me because for one, that is not true. We, we know that there are women who during the clinical trial actually became pregnant. They weren't initially pregnant, right? Um, became pregnant mm -hmm. and they went through full term and babies are doing just great. The thing that really disturbs me is that right now we have women in our ICUs who came in um, because of COVID-19, had to deliver the baby, whether the baby is, is, is of age or not. Um, but are literally struggling to live because pregnancy in itself is an immune compromised state. Women have to recognize, um, and society has to recognize, when a woman is pregnant, she, she literally becomes now responsible for two bodies, which stresses her system out. We know it stresses out the, the mom's heart. We know that we hear people say, oh, I have preeclampsia where my blood pressure has gone extremely high. Well, your immune system is also compromised for pregnancy, meaning that if you get COVID-19, you're more likely to have the most severe form of this manifestation. Mm -hmm. And so not being vaccinated places those moms at great risk. And also with vaccination, you are able to pass immunity onto your child potentially, which means yes. that your baby 
can be born with a shield around it from COVID-19. So just think about that. And once again, like you said, you can't just think about yourself. Think about the people, the family members that are around you because you could be healthy, but they could have an underlying condition and they may not be as lucky. Dr. Ebony Jade Hilson, I love having you on the show. You always bring a wealth of knowledge, that passion, uh, that conviction. Uh, continue to fight the good fight out there and uh, let's save those lives, okay? Appreciate you. Thanks.